Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. Join up to support the electrification of transport and get the help you need to finance your own EV or clean energy future. And by U-Gears. Give the gift of fully functioning wooden mechanical models to inspire, educate and entertain your loved ones this holiday season. And by Energy Sage. Visit the link in the description to find local verified solar installers and community solar projects in your area that will help you power your home and your car with clean, green, renewable energy. Welcome back to TEN or Transport Evolved News. It is great to see you. Before we get going today, a little correction. In last week's show, I mentioned that the Tesla Semi had an efficiency of two kilowatt hours per mile based on what I had heard during the Tesla Semi event. Elon Musk has since said on Twitter that the efficiency of the Tesla Semi is 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile. So we are sorry for the confusion. For a while now, Ford has been pretty open about the fact that it wants to move away from EV batteries containing nickel and cobalt, shifting to lithium iron phosphate or LFP batteries instead. Now, thanks to a presentation given online last week by Lisa Drake, Ford's vice president of EV industrialization, we've learned Ford wants to introduce LFP batteries in its Mustang Mark E models next year, followed shortly thereafter by a switch for the F-150 Lightning. Less energy dense and less power dense than NMC lithium ion cells, LFP cells contain no cobalt or nickel, are cheaper to produce and have a longer lifespan. Neither Ford nor Drake would commit to exactly which models will get LFP batteries, but because NMC cells have the edge when it comes to high performance applications, we'd expect high performance models like the Mustang Mark E GT and GT Performance to keep NMC cells while other variants switch to LFP. One of the benefits of having so much computer technology inside modern cars is the ability for automakers to push software updates to add new features and address software bugs. This week, we learned that Volkswagen is about to push out a software update for the 2021 and some 2022 model year ID4s in North America. There are plenty of new features, including the addition of auto hold, some new infotainment modes and screens, and some bug fixes. It's common for automakers to do this via an over-the-air software update, but sadly this update, which will prepare cars for future over-the-air updates, requires customers to visit their Volkswagen dealer to have the upgrade done in person. According to Volkswagen's press release, some customers may also get a replacement 12-volt battery to address a separate issue with early Volkswagen ID4s. Last year, Tesla made some waves when it removed radar sensors from its vehicles, then earlier this year removed ultrasonic sensors as part of a shift towards vision-only autopilot operation. Earlier this year, Tesla applied to the FCC for permission to use a new radar suite in its vehicles, gaining a six-month confidential treatment to prevent the FCC from releasing details of that new radar system. This week, Tesla has apparently asked for a short-term extension to that confidentiality treatment, stating that it will market the new radar system from the middle of January. Elon Musk had previously stated safety would be better with pure vision than with vision and radar, later adding that only a very high-resolution radar paired with vision would improve vehicle safety. It's not clear if this new system is, said, very high-resolution radar mentioned, but since Tesla Tesla is planning an upgrade to Model 3, it's certainly plausible. Earlier this year, we travelled to Los Angeles to see the Sono Motors Sion solar electric car for the first time. And at that press event, Sono's team seemed pretty confident about their future. A few months later, we learn that not all is well at Sono, with the company founders issuing a public statement detailing some pretty significant financial struggles. With poor third quarter results, Sono Motors says its Sion EV is on the chopping block and may be cancelled to enable it to focus on a more lucrative side to the company, business-to-business -business automotive solar panel development. Before making that decision, though, the company has issued a last chance Hail Mary purchase campaign, asking its existing reservation holders to commit to buying the Sion EV in exchange for a €3,000 discount. The company says it needs 3,500 customers to pay up front in the next 50 days. So watch this space.
It's no secret that Tesla is currently fighting several legal cases through the courts, some of them relating to decisions made by the company and some relating to promises made. This week, there was movement in a class action lawsuit brought against Tesla by owners who say the company engaged in fraud and the company was, quote, misleading the public regarding its autopilot, enhanced autopilot and full self-driving capability, end quote. While owners are frustrated over the multi-year wait for autonomous capabilities, something many of them paid large amounts of money for, Tesla filed a motion this week to have the case dismissed, stating, quote, mere failure to release a long-term aspirational goal is not fraud, end quote. It continues arguing that it has been constantly improving its autopilot technology and says the complaint doesn't identify specific timelines when it promised that it would have the technology ready. As we covered in last week's show, Volkswagen is readying its mid-cycle refresh for the Volkswagen ID3, the first car built on its electric MEB platform. This week, Volkswagen went a little further, teasing the MEB Plus platform that it says will further enhance the capabilities of all future MEB platform vehicles. Building on the MEB platform, the MEB Plus platform will mark a move towards a new modular battery pack system that the company he says will offer up to 700 kilometers or 434 miles of range and offer charging speeds of between 175 and 200 kilowatts. While Volkswagen stopped short of stating exactly when this new version of the MEB platform will enter into production, it is essentially an incremental step towards higher speed charging, longer ranges per charge and hopefully more affordable EVs over the next few years. Earlier this year, Ford announced it would give its Ford dealerships until the end of October to decide if they wanted to become certified EV dealers by joining its Model E program. Under that program, only Ford EV certified dealerships would be allowed to sell and service EVs. And while Ford extended the deadline for dealerships to sign on, it's now stating that two thirds of its dealerships have already signed up. While signing on comes with some significant financial costs for the dealerships, since there's additional training and requirements to have on-site charging and servicing equipment, it's good to see so many dealerships get on the EV bandwagon. However, while Ford has two-thirds of dealerships signed on, it now finds itself the subject of a class action from some of the dealerships who didn't. Those dealerships say they should be allowed under franchise law to sell the Ford models they want. That includes EVs. Euro NCAP, the European crash test organization responsible for rating all European cars, has published its final crash test reports for the year, and there are three more EVs rated. First up, the Volkswagen ID Buzz, which received a full five-star rating, gaining 92% for adult occupant and 87% for child occupant safety. It scored an impressive 90% for its advanced safety assist features, which includes things like lane keep assist, lane departure warning and emergency braking, but came up pretty short on its vulnerable road user protection, scoring just 60%. Also released at the same time were results for the Lucid Air, suggesting that the luxury EV is readying full-scale European deliveries. Earning five stars overall, the executive sedan gets 90% for adult occupant and 91% for child occupant, one of the best scores we've seen for child protection. Safety Assist earns it 84%, while vulnerable road users, again, were the weakest area, with a 78% rating. Finally, for the Euro NCAP crash test roundup, the MG4 EV, which also scored five stars. Its adult occupant and child occupant scores were lower than the other two EVs tested at 83 and 80% 80 respectively, but its safety assist and vulnerable road users weren't that dissimilar at 78 and 75% respectively. It's great to see so many new cars get five star crash test ratings, but let's see some better pedestrian protection scores, eh? With Elon Musk now owner of Twitter, there's been some discussion online about what impact that fact will have on Tesla's competitors in the auto industry. Some automakers no longer advertise on the platform and some industry CEOs like Henrik Fisker have let the platform completely. 
Fisker stated he was worried about the CEO of a rival company owning Twitter. That seems to have been illustrated this week, though, when Elon Musk used Twitter to respond to a story from Insider claiming Lucid is calling customers up to 14 times to convince them not to cancel their car orders. Musk, who has expressed disdain in the past for both Lucid and its CEO, Peter Rawlinson, Rawlinson happens to be an ex-Tesla executive, said on Twitter that, quote, they are not long for this world, end quote. Musk has 120 million followers on Twitter, so carries some significant influence. I'm going to be bringing you our short shorts in a moment, but first a word from today's video sponsors, YouGears. YouGears combines everything you remember from the engineering toys you may have played with as a child with the beauty of wooden parts, the accuracy of laser cut pieces, and the joy of ingenious, fully functioning mechanical models. YouGears offers a wide range of beautiful, fully functional 3D models that you can assemble yourself at home with no prior experience, with clear, easy to follow instructions right there in the accompanying, beautifully made assembly book. There's no glue needed to assemble the parts, and you get everything you need inside the box to make your own models, ranging from simple creations suitable for ages five and up, all the way through to incredibly detailed engineering models. And the plywood used meets all international safety standards. There's really something for everyone, ranging from working clocks through to musical instruments, and my favorite for this year, the pickup Lumberjack, which is based on the iconic Chevy 3100. We've teamed up again this year with U Gears, and we would love you to check out its website, where you'll find a whole host of amazing realistic mechanical models and kinetic sculptures. Right now, shipping on all orders of $50 or above is free, and if you buy one of Yugi's amazing kits, you'll not only get a great gift, but you'll also be supporting a Ukrainian business that's managed to keep creating and inspiring throughout the illegal Russian invasion. Prices start from just $10 and work all the way up from there, so check out the full link below to pick yours. There is still time to order, but full disclaimer, we are working on a commission, so if you follow the link, we will get a thanks from the company. And now it's time for short shorts. General Motors subsidiary Bright Drop has officially entered Canada with both its first Canadian customers placing orders and its first Canadian production facility opening up. DHL Canada becomes the first large scale Canadian customer with trucks made in Ontario. Subaru has officially published its first month of sales for the Subaru Solterra EV in North America. Having just launched at the start of November, 94 examples were sold nationwide, giving Subaru better sales figures than the Mazda MX-30, but only just. Ford Pro, Ford's commercial vehicle division, has announced a new venture with Deutsche Post DHL that will see Ford deliver more than 2,000 vans to the company for use in last mile delivery applications. Ultimately, the partnership could cover the whole of Europe. Alpha Motor Corporation has released a rendering of a vehicle it's now taking deposits on. Called the Alpha Montage, this limited production electric coupe will, the company says, be available for half a million dollars. It says it will have a 150 kilowatt drivetrain and yes, it's expensive. Toyota says it's investigating the cold weather performance of its BZ4X electric car after the Federation of Danish Motorists did a range test in which a production BZ4X managed just half of its claimed range in temperatures just above freezing. So we'll keep you posted. German company Uno Motion, which produces electric human hybrid cargo vehicles for use in major cities, has closed its Series A financing round with a total of 6 million euro in the bank. It's also announced a new bond issuance worth 15 million euros to expand its funding. Ultra fast charge battery specialist Stordot announced this week that its production ready 30 amp hour pouch cell extreme fast charge batteries have completed external validation at an independent battery test facility. This confirms Stordot's claimed technical specifications. A growing set of headlines this week suggests Switzerland is banning EVs because of winter blackouts and an energy grid that can't cope. But the reality is that the Swiss government is looking at a four-step plan to deal with the restricted power caused by Russian blockades and would turn off things like ski lift heaters long before asking people to restrict their EV use. Speaking at an event on Thursday this week, GM CEO Mary Barra said the company is looking to expand its supply chains as it brings more electric vehicles to market. Its ultimate goal is to have multiple suppliers for all EV components, mitigating further parts shortage constraints. And that would be great news were it not for the fact that the same week, GM President Mark Royce told Fox Business that while GM is expanding its EV offerings, it's not giving up on internal combustion engines yet, planning a slew of new internal combustion engine trucks. 
the National Forestry Service, which has been promoting the use of clean, green electric vehicles for years, has officially taken delivery of its first batch of Ford F-150 Lightning pickup trucks. They will be used on the governmental fleet throughout the US. Mercedes-Benz has announced it's expanding its electric vehicle drive unit production line to achieve an output of 1 million drive units per year from 2024. Given that most EQ-branded vehicles are dual motor, that's equivalent to half a million EVs. Los Angeles may be able to thank the oil boom for some of its growth over the years, but this week the LA City Council voted unanimously to ban all new oil wells within city limits and force all existing oil wells to stop pumping oil by 2042. That would dramatically improve air quality. The latest Bloomberg New Energy Finance report shows there's been a disturbing rise in the cost of electric vehicle batteries this year. The volume weighted average for EV batteries peaked at $151 per kilowatt hour. That's up 7% on last year. Nissan has confirmed that while its LEAF will continue to be produced for 2023 model year, it will get a slight tweak to its battery pack. Now, for this year, it will get a next generation battery that's smaller at 60 kilowatt hours, but much more efficient. Toyota's lack of interest in battery electric vehicles is something we've covered a lot on this channel, and this week Toyota unveiled another attempt not to make an EV, a hydrogen combustion engine crawler Cross. It's supposedly 40% along the path to series production. Motional, in collaboration with Hyundai and Uber, has officially launched its robo-taxi service in Las Vegas, Nevada. Ultimately, the self-driving robo-taxis based on the Ionic 5 will be available in multiple markets, but for now, you can book one through UberX in SimCity. General Motors has launched its dealer community charging program, something that it says will build the largest level 2 charging network in the US. But while it's a good idea in practice, nobody wants to sit in a car dealership parking lot and charge their car for several hours. Just as its first electric cars are heading to the US, Vinvast has filed the necessary paperwork with the US Securities and Exchange Commission to begin the process of becoming a publicly traded company. An IPO may happen as early as next year. A month ahead of its official unveiling at CES 2023, Ram is busy teasing more videos of its upcoming Ram Revolution pickup truck. The newest video, which dropped midweek, shows some up-close clay sculptures being worked on for said vehicle. Reuters is reporting that several of the banks who helped Elon Musk purchase Twitter are looking at issuing new margin loans backed by Tesla stock to replace some of Musk's existing high-interest Twitter debt. It could have a negative impact on Tesla stock prices. In a new car and driver feature this week, the magazine reports that General Motors is preparing to spin off the Camaro and Escalade models into their own sub-brands, each with an electric vehicle variant, but it doesn't appear, however, these will be EV-only brands. ST Microelectronics, a company that provides power electronics to Hyundai Kia for use in its eGMP platform vehicles, say it will soon provide a next generation powertrain electronic system that will provide improved power output, better range and even faster charging. Formula E has officially announced the FIA has approved its race calendar for 2024, with Portland, Oregon replacing New York as the home to the US e Prix. Since we're based here, you can bet we'll be covering the race as best we can. Einride has confirmed it's secured additional funding to help it expand its production and bring sustainable automated freight mobility to market. Its latest round of funding, equivalent to half a billion US dollars, is split between a Series C equity raise and debt facility. France has been given the OK from the European Commission to start banning short-haul and executive jet flights from popular airports in the country. With so many good rail options in France, short-haul executive charter flights are more about image than practicality. The US government is looking to implement a new standard for its own buildings to cut energy use. Starting 2025, US government buildings will be required to reduce on-site emissions by 90% compared to 2003 levels, ultimately becoming emission-free. Polestar has announced a new over-the-air update for Polestar 2 owners in North America that will release an additional 68 horsepower, 50 kilowatts of power. Unlike previous over-the-air tweaks, however, this one comes with a one-time $1,200 price tag. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. It's that time of the show when I show you a little something the team's been working on, and this time it's the Volvo C40 Recharge Twin we had at the start of November. You should have already seen the walk around, which went live on Friday, but the drive review is dropping very soon.
It's been a very long time since Scotland had an automaker that it could call its own. But this week that changed when startup Munro EV unveiled its rugged Mark 1 EV. Essentially an all-electric go-anywhere equivalent to the original Land Rover, this 4x4 promises a payload capacity of 2,200 pounds, 1,000 kilograms, towing capacity of 7,700 pounds, 3,400 kilograms and seating for five. It comes with AC and DC quick charge capabilities and while it's neither particularly quick, a sprint time is just under five seconds or fast. Top speed is 80 miles per hour or 128 kilometers per hour. It's billed for a hard life, not a fast life. Prices are claimed to start from just under £50,000 sterling, excluding VAT, but only 50 will be made next year. I'm going to admit I'd quite like to have a go. And finally, while we cover a whole lot of electric cars on this channel, the reality of decarbonizing transportation is that we need to invest much more in micromobility solutions rather than full-size vehicles. And that, of course, means more electric bicycles, human bicycle hybrids and e-scooters, among lots of other cool types of micromobility. But while e-scooters are great in cities where appropriate routes and rules are laid out to keep everyone safe, they're no use to people who use wheelchairs. Except they now are. Enter French startup Omni, which produces a type of e scooter that can attach to a traditional wheelchair, giving its user the chance to use an e scooter like non wheelchair users can. Thanks to a new partnership with Tier Mobility, a new program is launching in parts of Paris that will see wheelchair accessible e scooters deployed, making sustainable, independent, ad hoc e mobility finally a reality for even more Parisians. And on that note, we are done for the day. But before I go, a huge thank you to the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. The EVA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make the switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Union. So find out more by heading to electricauto.org. And thanks to the lovely folks at UGears. Educate, entertain and enthrall this holiday season with one of UGears amazing fully functional mechanical models. Follow the link below to get yours today. And finally, thanks to Energy Sage. Follow the link to find out how easy it can be to get verified, trustworthy solar experts helping you make the switch towards energy self-sufficiently, either through solar on the roof of your home or through a local community solar project. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell for this channel and our second channel, Transport Evolved Take Two. And in addition to becoming a Patreon supporter or a YouTube member, you can tip us through Kofi or check out our cool swag store. And if you like what you saw today, please consider adding a super thanks to your comment. It's super easy to do and it all helps our channel grow and we would really honestly appreciate you helping us out. YouTube's ad revenue for the past month is down 50% on previous months and if this continues it would be bad for us. So if you can send anything it will be gratefully received. As long as everything is okay, we'll be back next week with another Roundup show. But in the meantime, remember we publish content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, plus our Sunday musings and garden updates over on Take Two. Whatever you enjoy next, I hope your weekend is a great one. And as always, keep evolving.